Hi, I'm Margaret Harris, Physics World's Reviews and Careers Editor. I'm here at the UK's Central Laser Facility in Oxfordshire to talk to its director, Mike Dunn, about HYPER, a planned multi-billion euro super laser that will be used to carry out proof of principle research into energy generation from laser-driven fusion. HYPER, or to use its full name, the High Power Laser Re Energy Research Facility, is now one year into a three-year feasibility study. Mike, can you tell us more about this proposed laser fusion project and the exotic science it will enable? Sure. So HYPER, Hyper is a large-scale laser project, multinational in scope, and it's designed to harness the power of laser fusion. So the way, way this works is you get a very large-scale laser, and, and here we're talking the largest in the world. You know, power is equivalent to tens of thousands of times larger than the power of our national grid, but delivered in a tiny fraction of a second, typically a millionth of a millionth of a second. And so what that does is it creates extreme conditions. Think of it like a spark lighting a fusion burn wave. So you can force atoms together to overcome their coulombic repulsion, bond atoms of hydrogen together to form helium to give off lots of energy. That energy can then be used in one of two ways, either to harness it for a power source for our, our electricity grid, or to drive some fundamental physics research. If you think about the types of physics you might be able to, uh, uh, to look at, well, fusion is the process that drives the stars and our sun, of course. So you can use it to look into the depths of the sun and study solar physics in situ at the very center of the sun, or use it to study how supernovae evolve, how gamma ray bursters are produced and evolve, how protostellar jets and uh, nebulae are formed. A, a whole wide range of laboratory astrophysics can be brought down here and studied experimentally for the first time. Who are the key players in HYPER and how are they contributing to the project? So HYPER is a consortium of 26 separate institutions from across 10 different countries in Europe and they contribute either in terms of the scientific design of how do you achieve laser fusion, what is the scale and size of the laser you need to build, what's the form of the fusion fuel and how is that compressed, um, or they contribute um, technical capabilities such as the lasers here at this laboratory, or, or they contribute in terms of looking at the at the geopolitical and economic landscape of fusion and how it fits into the energy debate. How does HYPER differ from other laser fusion projects like the US National Ignition Facility or NIF and the Megajoule Laboratory in France? What are the advantages to doing fusion in this way? Well laser fusion is a concept that was born in the very early days of the laser, just three days after the demonstration of the laser in 1960. Uh, somebody thought of the idea of using it to uh, bond atoms together to form fusion. And it was thought at that time to be relatively simple, and it's turned out to be quite difficult. And it, it's taken about 50 years to build a laser the scale, the size of which can induce nuclear fusion at a level that releases more energy out than you put in. And that's the objective of those facilities you mentioned, the National Ignition Facility in the States and Laser Megajoule in Bordeaux in France. But they only do this once. It's a single demonstration of capability that a laser can indeed produce fusion energy output more out than in. What HYPER is designed to do is to harness that demonstration, to operate on a repetitive cycle to generate a net amount of power. Think of, think of HYPER like a car engine, that you inject some fuel. In this case, the fuel is a small ball bearing filled with hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium. A piston then compresses the fuel. In our case, the piston is the big laser. Um, and it compresses it to the point at which the, the atoms bond together and uh, fuse to form helium and ignite a fusion burn wave. Lots of energy is given off. The process is then exhausted and repeated, just like in a car engine, but about five times a second in the case of laser fusion. And if you do that, you get out gigawatt scales of electricity. And of course, you get access to a whole range of exciting science. Initial experiments, you say, are now underway at NIF, the National Ignition Facility. How will that work shape the direction of the HYPER project? Yes, yeah, so I guess NIF will shape us in one of two ways. Um, first of all, it'll be a political statement, a demonstration to the world that a laser can be built that's big enough and controlled enough to generate uh, nuclear fusion energy, uh, laser fusion energy. And that's the culmination of over 50 years research, of course. That's, that's a non-trivial statement to the world that we've got to the point where laser fusion works. And then, of course, NIF will help in another way. It helps us define the, the design of the, uh, the fuel pellets, the design of the laser, and informs the, the way in which HYPER should be built and configured to get maximum 
energy output and maximum benefit, both scientifically uh, for, for you know, societal reasons, uh, exactly what it should look like, how it should be built, and informs the consortium of partners, both academic and industrial, that should be pulled together to realize this, this huge venture. Okay. What are some of the technological challenges to getting this sort of five times a second repeat rate for this yes. laser? So, so if it, it, they're, they're still very significant, of course. We, we've got to the point now, or a year or so away from, the scientific demonstration that this is now a reality. We still have a number of technical hurdles to overcome, as you mentioned. The first is building a laser big enough uh, that can cycle through five times a second the amount of energy that's required. And that's probably about a factor of 10 from where we are now in the world. But lasers develop very rapidly, and a factor of 10 in the laser world means probably three, four, five years or so. We then have to make these little pellets of fuel, and again, make them five times a second, and make them at a, at a level uh, that's commercially viable for energy production purposes. And again, that, that's, that's a big challenge, and will probably take a few more years research yet. And then we have to build the, uh, the power plant itself to be able to withstand uh, this energy production over the course of many tens of years. Very similar kind of problems to the magnetic fusion community um, that's been looking at this over many years and indeed elements of the nuclear fission community that's been looking at many of these issues over many years. So again we believe fully manageable problems, timescales of order 10 years or so to, to tackle those and Hyper is designed to integrate all of this together into one demonstration plant. And then in addition of course to the uh, uh, to the energy exploitation potential, we have the science potential. And, and here's where the, where the scientists have to put their thinking caps on. How do you exploit this enormous amount of energy, this star on Earth, that will be giving out um, X-rays, neutrons, charged particles, at levels that we simply have never seen before? How do you harness that? How do you capture it? How do you diagnose what's going on? It will be an enormous technical challenge for, for the scientists to, to look quantitatively at the research that, that will be produced. So if the project gets the go-ahead, construction is due to start in the next decade. What does the, the roadmap look like after that? Mm. So the roadmap I think about in, in three stages. Within the next one year or two years, uh, we hope that the Americans will demonstrate the laser fusion scientific proof of principle. That gives the, the evidence, the demonstration go-ahead for a major technology development phase, such that within 10 years we believe the technology will be demonstrated to the point where we can build hyper with real confidence. Construction will probably take five years or so, and five years of operation, such that within 20 years we hope we'll have the scientific and technological and integrated evidence to be able to exploit fusion energy on the world stage for energy production and for scientific purposes.